There is something out at sea, terrorizing the world shipping. Out of the darkness came this great wall of water. I've never seen a wave as big as this in my whole life. It can strike out of the blue with devastating consequences. You hit solid water and it is like running into a brick wall. The entire bridge was wrecked. Horrific. Monstrous. You feel as if the end of the world has come. This is the story of a wave that is sinking ships around the world. A killer that defies all scientific understanding and that no ship is designed to withstand. It is one of the best kept secrets of the sea that once a week a ship sinks to the bottom of the ocean, often without mayday or any clue as to what happened. One of the most mysterious of these disappearances is that of the Munchen. The Munchen was a vast new type of cargo ship. The length of two and a half football pitches, she was the pride of the German merchant navy. On the 7th of December, 1978, she set sail on a routine trip to America. On board were 27 crew, including Uwe Hinrich. This was my son, Uwe, 20 years old. He liked going to sea. He said it was the safest ship in the world. Everybody said it was unsinkable, the best ship in the world. That night in December, there was a giant storm raging across the Atlantic. The waves were the size of houses. But that would not have troubled the Munchen. For a ship so powerful and well-maintained, such storms were just routine. It was assumed that all was well and going to schedule. Until 3 a.m. on the night of the 12th of December. It was an SOS from the Munchen. She was in trouble and needed help. But at this stage, no one was too alarmed, because even if damaged, the powerful Munchen could float for days. At the beginning, we were very calm. I told myself this couldn't happen to the Munchen. It's so safe. Everything had been taken care of. They'd thought about everything. Within hours, search and rescue planes were sent to find her. And all the ships in the busy shipping route came to join in the search. Like a police hunt, they were lined up three miles apart, combing vast areas of the ocean for the Munchen. It was the biggest search in the history of shipping. In charge was Captain Peter de Neisch. We hoped to find the ship, or at least people, or a lifeboat, a life raft with people, and we never found any living soul, which every day became more disappointing. All that was recovered was an empty lifeboat and some wreckage. That a ship can be in trouble, that can happen to any ship. It happens all the time, everywhere now and then. But that it completely disappeared, that such a big modern ship could disappear, that was surprising. 
For some reason, the great ship and her crew had disappeared off the face of the earth. And no one could understand why. An investigation started immediately, going over every detail of her design and the few remains that had been found. The only clue to what happened was found on the recovered lifeboat. Normally, it hung 20 meters above the waterline, and it was one of the tiny metal pins that it hung from that drew the investigators' attention. One of them was Werner Humu. The key, actually, to what, what could have happened to the Mönchian is the forward block of the starboard lifeboat. The, uh, which is shown here on, on, on this picture. We see here on the pictures these steel pins, uh, pins bent from forward to aft. This indicates that the boat hanging underneath was struck by a tremendous force from forward aft, which caused these bendings of these rather strong steel pins. Some huge force had hurled the lifeboat out of its metal pins, 20 meters up above sea level. But what this force was, was a mystery. The Maritime Court could only conclude that bad weather caused an unusual event, which led to the sinking of the ship. But many mariners suspected they knew what sank the Munchen. Something that, according to legend, sinks a huge number of ships every year. A freak wave. The freak, or rogue wave, is one of the great myths of the sea. All my sea career, I've been hearing stories about rogue waves. Mariners talk of a single breaking wave the size of a tower block that can rear up out of nowhere. It was colossal, at least 80 feet high, probably even bigger. We estimate the height of the wave 30 meters. It looked enormous. It looked like a white cliff. It was just like a mountain, a wall of water coming against us. I've never seen a wave as big as this in my whole life. It's not a tsunami or tidal wave. It's not caused by earthquakes or giant landslides. No one knows where it comes from or why it happens. The freak wave is a huge, steep wave coming out of the blue without any prediction, without any expectations. It's just that. But there's one small problem with all these stories. According to all scientific knowledge of the sea, Freak waves are practically impossible. Scientists have understood ocean waves for centuries. They are simply made by the wind. The stronger the wind and the longer it blows, the bigger the waves. In order to predict the biggest wave a ship will meet, scientists use a set of mathematical equations called the linear model. This says that in any sea condition, there is a limit to how big the largest wave will be. And that mariner's tales of monster waves that come out of nowhere have got to be wrong. Mariners are like fishermen, aren't they? I mean, they sure they come back from the sea and they tell all kinds of interesting stories and people look at them suspiciously. It's sort of like, you know, the fish that got away and he says, oh, that was 10 meters long, you know. Well, waves are sort of the same. Jim Gunson of the Met Office uses the linear model to...